So once you have a logo, and by the way, I call this the three R's of, of a logo, but this is information you can use when designing a logo or creating the logo. It should be these three things, and I call them the three R's. Rememberable, I don't even know if that's a word, rememberable, readable, and irrelevant. So, rememberable means that they're easy to remember. Your logo should be easy to remember. Readable means that they should be able to read whatever is on your logo. If it's text, uh, you know, that you should be able to read that. And then lastly is relevant. So, your logo, if possible, should have something that cues or reminds them of what your business is about. So maybe you have a dog grooming business and you have a cute little puppy inside a circle and it says something like uh, Joe's dog grooming and anyway that that would be you know the dog would have to be interesting enough to be rememberable and the text would have to be readable and then the whole image is relevant to the type of business so it it engages them and reminds them of the type of business that you are so those are some tips about logos but the logo is a minimalistic on a web page it goes in the top left hand corner it's probably the best place for it I have seen it in other locations it's not the only location you can display a logo but uh, just to get it out of the way and to put it in the subconscious. Then to the right of that is an area that I like to leave for secondary things even though it's in the top middle of the page and by the way people read from left to right so you you already know that so you don't want you generally speaking you want to put your most important things on a page starting from the top left hand corner and then working down because that's where people are trained to read from I know I just told you to put your logo there and that it wasn't important, but that's why you put a small logo there. Generally, people just kind of blank out that very top area, and the reason why is the area immediately to the right of where I'm su suggesting you put your logo is an area that is typically reserved for what's called banner blindness. Banner blindness it is an area that people don't recognize consciously because they're so used to seeing an advertisement there and there are so many advertisements across each website that go in the middle top section of a page. So that area really should be something secondary. And going from there, let's talk about your color scheme because your color scheme, one, should match your logo. You should have a consistent color scheme across your entire marketing effort. So all your business cards, your brochures, uh, car magnets, uh, you know, anything that's any ads that you display in publications, you should try to match the theme with your logo and the color scheme. So let's talk about colors for a minute. Every color in the world has a subconscious, triggers a subconscious thought process or feeling inside people. There's been a number of studies that show this, and you can look them up online if you want to know more about them, or if you want to see some very specific reactions that people generate to certain colors. But generally speaking, on the web, uh, you don't want to use any color that is difficult to read because you're looking at the screen, it should be readable, and we'll get into some very powerful information about creating a very readable website shortly, but for the time being, just concerning colors, uh, black text on a white background is very readable, so that's a good choice any time that you're creating something. White text on a black background is more difficult to read, but it's not the worst, but in all cases, you pretty much want to avoid the, the color yellow yellow really isn't readable on a white background or a black background or any background in between. In fact, for the web, yellow is just a terrible color. If you want, if you have yellow in your logo, I suggest that you tweak it a little bit and make it more of a gold tone or more of a mustard color so that it has a little bit more contrast 
between uh, the backdrop of most screens. So, anyway, what do the colors mean? Well, white means purity. So, purity is good when it comes to the web because if you're on a site and it, it's all white, it's going to make you think purity. Purity is a correl or correlates with innocence and you don't want people thinking that you're a scam and if you make your background black and everything seems dark and dreary then it tends to trigger emotions and reactions in human beings that make you make them think that you're shady or scam or something like that so you want to try to avoid those types of looks i generally try to keep it light and bright when selling on the internet uh, if you're trying to if you, I, get, I know a lot of photographers that have websites. If you're doing a lot of photos, photos look great with a black backdrop because it's high contrast. And I understand that there are some good uses for the color of black. So uh, I'm not. I actually really enjoy the color black, and I think it makes for a beautiful looking website. But if I'm selling products specifically, I think white is a better choice for a backdrop. So what does black mean? Well, I just said black is a little bit more. It's actually a authoritative is the word that describes black so black doesn't necessarily mean bad it's just that it, it you know, communicates authority so there's a lot of times where you want to communicate authority in your marketing efforts and those are the times to use black now a much better color to contrast your white on the web is blue like a dark dark blue a navy blue because then you have some of the authoritative aspects of black, but you also have the loyalty aspects of blue. People tend to think of blue as being a loyal color. It's a cool color, so people, if you're if you're trying to communicate that something is cold or or cool, then blue is a good color. If you're trying to communicate that something is soft, then like a lighter blue is a good color. Uh, blue is is really good for building trust on the web because of the loyalty factor so you'll notice that a lot of the big websites that sell things are primarily a white background with black text and a blue and blue highlights or blue uh, uh, a little bit of blue mixed in like amazon.com if you look you'll see their site is pretty much as I just described and then they have a little bit of gold in there with their logo uh, which I talked about earlier and uh, anyway, same with eBay. I mean, they all have a little bit of gold. Yellows and gold, I said they're basically not good on the web, yellows. But gold or a little bit more contrast, the real light yellows are really hard to see and really hard to read. But gold is good for call to action buttons because uh, there's a, uh, they stick out. It draws attention. You know, it's like a highlighter. Um, but let's talk about red because red is also sticks out. But red creates the feelings in terms, uh, the feeling in, in a person that there may be an emergency. So you want to be careful about red. You do want to use it because it's an eye grabber, it's an attention getter. But you don't want to use it too much because you don't want that to be. You don't want it to say there's an emergency or there's an alarm or you don't want to agitate people. Red tends to be an agitating color. That's why when you see uh, all the, uh, the bullfighting, the, the uh, bullfighter will wave a red flag or a red uh, sheet or whatever in front of the bull and he'll charge that because bull, or red is an attention getter and it's an agitator. Now, there are times when in your marketing efforts, you want people to feel like it's a, an alert or an emergency. I know I've built some pages where I wanted people to take a specific action, so I made the call to action very red, and I said the words warning because people are used to looking at signs, and that's a whole other uh, topic about design, but people are used to reading signs, signs on the freeway, signs when they're out and about, so uh, anything you can do to kind of play off of signs will help uh, drive specific actions as well. So for example, I use the word WARNING in all caps and red in the past because I really wanted to grab somebody's attention and then I had a real authoritative, you know, black text that explained you know why they must act now or something you know like that and that that works pretty well for grabbing attention 
Uh, some of this stuff, you know, you may think, hey, that's cheesy or whatever. I wouldn't go for that. But the truth is, is that uh, a lot of people just aren't even going to notice your text if you don't do something to grab their attention. And again, if, you, if it's not read and if it's not consumed, then it's pointless. I mean, nobody's going to buy something that, that they don't know anything about. So, uh, red, agitation, alerts, emergencies. Green is typically very environmental. It's also very health conscious. conscious. Green is also a color that's used to induce uh, calmness. It's relaxing. It's a relaxing color. Uh, the Web Starts logo is green because I wanted... I knew that building websites could be frustrating and I wanted to relax people when they were thinking about building their websites. And if they think about web starts, I want them to be relaxed. I don't want them to be agitated. Had I made the logo red, then that could have induced feelings of agitation, which they already know that it's a frustrating process, so it's just running my own clients away. Um, orange is another alert color. It's a warm color. Uh, I forgot to mention green is a cool in the cool color family too. Purples are in the cool color family. I think it's pretty self-explanatory if you think about it. But orange is another kind of draw alert to color, but it can be good for call to action buttons, things like that. It's uh, got more contrast than the yellow when put on a white background or a black background, so it can be used in a very nice uh, way. And then, uh, you know, brown is an earth tone. Brown and green, those are two, a couple of the earth tones, but brown's more of a warm earth tone. And I wouldn't use brown unless I was really trying to convey something as being like tough, leathery, earthy, you know, something like that. So if that's part of your message, then brown is great. If not, I'd probably just stay away from brown because it's generally the least pretty of the colors. And, uh, you know, we can go into that later but you do want to have you do want to have a good looking website so I don't recommend using brown so that pretty much covers everything I guess other than silvers and grays which just that's a nice contrast between white and black and don't be afraid to use those I like a real light gray in a lot of the things I do it's it, it really softens up the look of a page and makes it look a little bit more it adds some depth if you put a gradient on it and a gradient means like just the slow fade from one color to another. Um, so that's pretty much covers everything that you need to know about your color scheme. So that color scheme again should match the logo and all your documentation or marketing efforts that you're making. And then let's talk about credibility and endorsement. So there's basically three ways that you create credibility on your web pages. There are testimonials which can come from clients or they can come from you know vendors or whatever. There are uh, partner company logos, recognizable logos from other companies and I'll talk about that and then which I call those endorsements really. Those are endorsements. And then the third thing is uh, seals and things like that. Seals medallions uh, it's, they kind of fall in the endorsement category too but there's really these three things so let me explain uh, on the web starts home page we've partnered with Facebook and Google and we know that those are some of the most recognizable logos on the web and so we display them on our web page and what that does is subconsciously in the consumers mind it draws a correlation between Facebook, Google, and Web Starts and it adds a sense of legitimacy to their subconscious mind when they go to the site and therefore they're more likely to trust us and follow the call to action. Then we also use a lot of things like Visa, MasterCard, American Express, VeriSign, Logos, Seals. I call these Seals. These are things that say or you know top 10 download seal or whatever you can make your own seals up but if you use a credible seal uh, it'll add your cred to your credibility so this would be like um, a classic one I see is you know PC magazine award winner something like that money back guarantee and then it's on a like a like a gold medal seal and then 
lastly, in the endorsement category or the credibility category, we have testimonials. Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. Those could be like quotes from some of your clients and how they're satisfied. I really like to put uh, photos of my clients in there. It adds a sense of, it, it just further adds to the credibility because they're real people. And uh, speaking of that, having human faces on your web pages is helpful too. Uh, these are not the main things that you focus on on a web page, but people are used to seeing or recognizing human faces, especially when doing commerce. So if you can put actual faces of people on your pages, then people will feel more uh, connected to your your page and they won't maybe be as likely to feel uh, like it's a cold unmanned website. So that brings me to the next point which is that you need to keep your website updated because again this person is going to probably come back to your website seven times before they actually buy anything. It's super critical that you constantly update some component of your homepage or of your web page. This tells them there's a real person behind it. It's not a the site is not abandoned. There's tons of abandoned websites on the internet and it's one of the most annoying things when you go to an abandoned website and you're about to do business with them or you're about to read an article and you find out it's 10 years old and it's irrelevant because it's not is for an industry like tech that changes all the time. It's super annoying to me. So I like to go to websites that I know somebody's behind. And how do I know somebody's behind them? Well, because they're making changes. Every time I go, there's something slightly different about the page. And because, you know, whether it's a blog article, which by the way, that's one of the reasons on a web starts homepage at the bottom. You'll see we have a blog. We post uh, a blog every once in a while, and it says the date that the dot blog was created, and it says that very strategically because we want people to know that hey we've been here and updated our site since a certain day. I've used uh, created other web pages where I just said right in the top right hand corner in tiny text page up last updated on such and such a day and what happens is people come back to the site and they find out that lo and behold yes the site is being updated regularly and so then they feel more comfortable doing business with that person because they know that there's somebody actually behind the site. 